Welcome once more to Time to Draw with Lynn Berry. That's me. Uh, I'm going to draw a favorite character of mine today. It won't seem very action-y, and that's all right. But uh, this character is uh, from my uh, quasi-modern uh, uh, setting that is labeled uh, the Golden Hollow. And at the centerpiece of all that, there is an event that happens. And this event is a telekinetic natural disaster. And that dis natural disaster is the birth of one of the lead characters. And in this case, that character her name is Catherine Angel. She's a fairly normal person. She simply has an unrealized uh, potential of both telepathy and telekinesis. Uh, I know they're pretty standard things, um, but that that's what she has the potential for. Others know this, but she does not, at least not at first. So a lot of the plot centers around the fact that some people know what she's capable of, and most of the world doesn't. That, and she's also going to, to slowly figure out what she's capable of. And by slowly, I mean incredibly fast, because the quicker she can figure that out, the better. So, her, her motivation early on is... To just be herself, you know, to, to live her life. It's much like many other characters, you know, many other people just want to live their lives. In the first book, she's, well, for lack of a better term, she's, she's the damsel. And she's very much in distress. But it's not because how it seems at first. It seems at first, it's like, hey, I'm going to kidnap this per The bad guy kidnaps her, so the good guy will do what the bad guy wants. Later come to find out that's not the case. The bad guy was really after her all along. It's just he needed, he needs a few things. In order to make his plan work, he needs supplies that he is actually not capable of acquiring on his own. And that's where that's where Catherine comes in. You can use her as collateral to say, hey, if you do this for me, I'll let you have her back. Now, what makes this different than most other stories of its type is that there is not a there is not repeat not a romantic relationship between the lead character. Catherine. 
she already has someone else. And that's no one's ever going to matter as much as he does to her. So that's one element that makes things notably different right away. Her default attire in the series jeans t-shirt uh, happened to randomly put her in a pink t-shirt twice in once in different stories so I said you know what I'm just gonna roll with it, it can be a note on her particular taste so, I just went with it. So while in other things that I've drawn, I've said, hey, I'd like it if this person played this character. This is an area, this is a character that doesn't fit that kind of situation as easily. And a lot of the reason for that comes from that I kind of piecemealed her together with her appearance. It comes from several sources. I mean, yes, there's the X Men influence. There, there's a lot of Jean Grey there. Same time, there's a lot of different motivations as well. Some of them from different setting, some from different story type, but a lot of it comes from the fact that they're just different characters. I mean, in comics as a whole, it's not very often where you encounter a core character that is just trying to live their life. Eventually they come around and say, well, I guess I'll be a superhero. And that's their job. Well, Catherine just wants to live her life. She likes biology, she likes the studies that she does, it takes part in. It's it's not an important thing for her to go out and fight crime and do battle with bad guys, that sort of thing. That that's not that's not her thing. Um, it's that's a thing of fiction for her. Then she finds out that sort of thing happens and is real. But even when she finds out it's real, she just wants to be herself, live her life, 
Fighting bad guys is another person's game. Of course, stories being what they are, just because you want to live your life normally and on your own, does not mean you will get to. Often, it's contrary to that. It's, it's not the case. For Catherine's appearance, at least in this picture, uh, I've stolen a few features from a few notable individuals, but I'm not going to say exactly who, because I want it to. I want this to look different. Not different in the sense that different from other things I've done or anything along those lines. I, I've used three different sources at least to sort out her features. And just because I use one one source for eyes in a general sense and one source for her mouth and one source for her pose do you really need to play pin the tail on, on, on the donkey no so i'm not going to share any sources on this or, or references because one i i've I've broken from them in this particular instance. But also, I want this to be its own thing. So, you're probably wondering, at least a little, of what color Catherine's hair is. And the one clue I'll give you is to the sources I use to, to fit the references. Uh, Catherine's hair starts off... Uh, Auburn, but as the story progresses, the red hue becomes much, much more dominant. And there are story reasons for this.
You can see from some of this that I'm playing a little bit by ear. I'm letting different things uh, assert how they'll appear just by playing around with them. In a lot of ways, this is how I write. And let the characters and story assert themselves how they need to work. Now, that's not to say I let it run out of control, but I do allow them some breathing room. You know, characters are going to do what they need to do. If a character sees I'm trying to write them doing something that's not in their character to do, You know, the characters resist. It's a real thing uh, for a lot of creatives, especially writers. Here I'm just illustrating eyelashes. And I'm putting some shading and a little bit of emphasis on the lips. Not a lot. One of the major differences in drawing red hair compared to blonde hair, because that's the closest comparison, is the amount of shading that's applied. And by shading, in this sense, I mean lines, micro shadows.
Let's see, what are we thinking? Honestly, I didn't mean to go super long with this, but we may be close to done already. Before that, uh, you know, I, I did mention earlier that Catherine is an important character, and she's an actually an important character. The second book, uh, the main character switches, and she becomes the main character. And she has her own particular... Uh, journey to go on, her own quest to endure. Just looking now to see if I need to if I need to do anything else with this, and I really don't. I'm gonna just do a few simple little things to give it a little more depth but in a minute uh, I'm gonna be done with this very shortly um, Steering in there. Make a little more dark over here. Not much, just a little. I like that. I'm not going to push it any further. I could. I could do some shading on the shirt. I'm not going to. I could do some shading on her hair. Again, I'm not going to. I'm 
incredibly satisfied with where this has gotten to. So, with that, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel where you can see further time to draw videos as well as uh, gaming videos and anything I may post about the stories directly that I'm working on. Uh, you can follow me also on Facebook, Twitter, I have a blog. Those links are provided below. And for now that's that's about that's about it. If you have any questions or suggestions Feel free to post them in the comments before. I make a point to reply as much as I can. So, with that, I'm Len Berry, and this has been Time to Draw. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.